All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Live with Lindsay. Um, it's Thursday, so it's Live with Lindsay. And today I am very excited to have two special guests with me. And today we're going to talk about looking your best on camera. And we're going to dive deep into some tactical lighting, audio, camera setup, um, tips and tricks so you can look your best on camera for all of our video meetings. And um, just before I introduce our, our guests today, and you can see them um, to my right, just remember that this is live. We can see your comments um, as we're broadcasting these. There is, um, if you want to show your name on the comments, um, because we are using StreamYard, just click their link to give them permission. You don't have to. Just if you don't, when you're leaving a comment, just make sure that you put your name in it so we can sh give a proper shout out to you. So I see a bunch of people have already joined. So when you're here, just give us a shout out. Let us know you're here and tell us where you're watching from today. Just give us a note of where you're where you're at. So without further ado, again, we're going to be talking about looking your best on camera, um, tactical lighting camera setup and audio tips and tricks. And I have two, not one, but two special guests today. I have the honor of having Adam Kilborn from Tech Inc. Engineering. He is the president of Tech Inc. Engineering. So welcome, Adam. And then I also have Kathy Hutchinson, and she is the Vice President, Director of Marketing at IDBree, which is a really cool, both of these firms are just super cool. So we have the experts on today. And so I wanted, again, to remind you that today we're going to be talking about tactical tips, and we're going to be going for the next 30, 45 minutes. But also after this, at 2 p.m., um, Donna Corlew, who is another friend of mine, is going to be having a webinar for SMPS on virtual shortlist presentations. And that starts at 2 p.m. Eastern today, just after this. So if you like this, the tactical, but then want to know how to um, prepare your teams for the virtual shortlist interview, you can go and check out that SMPS. Um, I think it's Pivot and Focus webinar. And if you can't make it live, just sign up anyways, and you'll get the replay. So I put that link to that program in the comments already. So jump over there real quick, but come back here um, to watch this. So we have some folks joining us. We have Emily from North Florida. She's right up the street from me. Hi, Emily. We have Ritu from Orlando. Hi, Ritu. So just as you guys are jumping on, <coughs> so tell us you're here. And so now that we've gone through some of the technical stuff, let me give turn it over to my guests to introduce themselves and talk about their, you know, their, how they got into marketing at AEC and what they're doing now. So let me change the screen up here. There we go. So you guys can all see them. So Adam, I'm going to start with you. Um, tell us a little bit about your history of marketing in the AEC world and what you're doing now. Okay. Well, I, um, I started at tech in 1999. So I've been there a little over 20 years now. And initially, I started in the IT as IT manager, and eventually um, switched over to marketing or took on the marketing role. We didn't really have anybody doing that at the time, and so I spent the the better part of fifteen to seventeen years doing marketing for the firm. And the last couple of years, um, we hired a marketing director to take over and uh, the marketing department and allowed me to shift over into the business side of the business, running the operations of the business now. So that's been the last, uh, the last couple of years. And this earlier this year, I was um, promoted to president of the firm. So Yay, that's um, awesome. So I wanted you to spend a few minutes to tell that story because it just shows you the possibility <clears throat> of having a good base of marketing and business development and then using those over on the business and operations side. It's just amazing what is possible in this industry. So thank you for spending a few moments sharing the, our, your story with us. And Kathy, tell us your story. So oddly, I have a very similar story. I started with the team that became iDebris back in 1996. And it was a part-time office manager job. I had no idea that it would become my career. But they asked, could you build us a website? And I didn't know anything about building a website. So I took like a Microsoft front page course and um, and really just grew and grew in my knowledge. And um, 
and have gotten to grow with the firm. Yeah. Because, yeah. It's been really, I, and I, I have to give a shout out to S and PS because, mm -hmm. because I wasn't trained in marketing. I have a radio and television background right. and I, they filled in all the gaps. It yeah. was a fantastic resource and quite frankly, community. Good, good, awesome. Okay, I love hearing. Whoops, I have. I love hearing everybody's stories because we're all so unique and our career paths are so unique. So that's why I always, in these lives, especially when I have guests on, to spend a few moments doing that. So we have some other folks that have joined us. Lisa from Atlanta. Hi, Lisa and Terry. Terry's here too from another um, Terry from Tech, and he's in Ohio. So welcome everyone. So again. As we move into today, today's into today's co content, um, you know, looking your best on camera for your video meetings. Don't forget if you have questions for our guests, mm -hmm. put them in the comments below, um, and we'll we can share them on the screen, and we'll definitely make sure that they have they can answer them for you. And if you want to leave a comment, just put your name in front of the comment so we know who it is, or you can click the link in the Streamyard the Streamyard link to show your name. So. Let's get on to the today's topic, looking your best on video. And so I'm going to start with you, Kathy. How can you change simple items in your environment, um, in your immediate environment, like right around you, to improve your appearance on camera? What tips do you have for us for that? Sure. So it's such a shift, right? All of a sudden, all of us are now on Zoom and trying to figure it out. Um, I think one of the most important things is camera placement. And a lot of that's driven by, especially if you're on a laptop, by where your camera's located. Mm -hmm. It is so easy. So let me, here, if I take out my yoga block here, <laughs> then suddenly I'm looking down at you. And we've all been, oh, yoga block. And <laughs> we've all mm -hmm. been on those calls where somebody is multitasking, so they're actually looking at another screen, mm -hmm. um, it's impossible to connect to somebody without eye contact. Mm -hmm. we, need, mm -hmm. we need that one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, mm -hmm. absolutely. How about you, Adam? Do you have anything to add to that? Um, I would say just remember that you're a representative of your company and mm -hmm. to have um, things in your background you know, behind you that are appropriate and maybe not offensive to people that may be on the other end of the camera. Yeah, um, yeah. And also keep in mind if you're, if you have a whiteboard or Kathy has a chalkboard behind her that should, that we don't have, um, you know, se business secrets up there that other people can, uh, can pull mm -hmm. off of the, the image as well. So. Yeah. Like a, you know, a confidential master plan or, you know, if you have plans sure. pinned up behind you or anything like that. Right. Yes. Right. Or your business development strategy, you know, mm -hmm. or the client your names and phone numbers. Yeah. Names. Or the client strategy for the client right. meeting that you're having. Yeah. So right. mm -hmm. good point. Okay. So with that in, in mind, Adam, um, do you think that we need to prepare like some kind of elaborate or robust setup for every video call situation? For example, you know, how would you maybe recommend setting up for a virtual happy hours versus like a client meeting or a short list presentation? Sure. Um, well, I would say, you know, for, it's a little different for each category. So virtual happy hours are obviously a little more casual, um, you know, but unless you're at doing a tiki happy hour, I would recommend wearing pants all the time in all of these meetings. <laughs> Um, we've seen the newscaster who forgot that he was on camera and had shorts on and things like that. So, um, so that's one. Um, with the virtual or with the happy hours, you know, we there some of the software allows the option to have a virtual background, mm -hmm. um, which gives you a, you know puts you in a different place than where you're at. And because that's a casual, fun thing, you know, it's that that works okay and um, can be fun to do. But when you get into your business meetings with your colleagues or as an interview, um, I would recommend not using those virtual backgrounds, but having a, a simple background behind you and making sure that you have um, proper lighting. So that's that's the other key. Kathy talked about having the, the camera in the right place, but having your lighting um, to make you show on camera as well. Mm -hmm. You should be the brightest part of the picture if you have light in front of you, that's going to light you up well. 
facing a window is ideal with the soft light that comes in through a window. Um, if you don't have that option, um, faking it with other lighting, um, and it can be <laughs> cheap lighting. I have a, uh, a shop light. In fact, I will here. Yes, show we're going to we're going to try to do this here. Okay, there we go. Walk us through yeah. Yeah. your so lighting. Here I, yeah, it's not. I don't have it set up for me right now because I didn't need it. But that's a shop light that I have pointed at the ceiling. But I could have it pointed towards me with. Um, I just use a plastic bag to soften the light. Uh, Kathy is using parchment on her lights. Um, we have like a window. A, like and a, a sh grocery shopping bag, like that kind of plastic bag? Uh, yes, that's what I have. Yes. Okay. Um, and for my window, it was a little too bright, so I hung a curtain in front of it that softens the light a little bit more. Um, you can use other lights that you get. This is an Ikea light. Um, that I, again, I have pointed away from me because I don't need it here right now. But um, so those are those are some options you can use. Um, you can also use poster board to reflect the light. So if if you are in a situation where you can't set it up to um, in front of you so much, but you can bounce it off of that light off of that poster board and have it reflect back on you. OK, is another uh, another good option as well. And if it wasn't um, such a sunny day, you would probably have to do that, right? It's I would. I would need to use sunny. one of yeah, some of those lights along the way. Um, All yeah. right. Well, we tried this new demonstration out. So let us know if you if you like yeah. it because um, uh, we're trying new technology with this Streamyard and it worked. So we tested it out yesterday yeah. and it, it's all working. Yeah. So thank you for one, that demonstration. Sure. sure. And one last thing with the uh, lighting is you should make sure you have more light in front of you than behind you. You don't want to be back backlit um, because then you become a shadow in your image and you, we can't see who you are or see your face right. very well. Um, so always have more light in front of you than behind you. Okay. So I want to add that your monitor is a light source um, mm -hmm. and what you have on it changes the way you look on camera. So right now I have a website up that has a lot of warm colors in it. But if I flip to the front page of Google or if I had a big spreadsheet mm -hmm. up, it immediately makes you much more blue. Um, mm -hmm. So just just paying attention that you've got this giant light source in front of you anyway. And Adam mentioned that I have parchment on my lights because if this is what you bake cookies on. Um, <laughs> but my light was causing a lot of strain throughout the day with multiple calls. So I just toned it down a little bit. Okay. So you just covered your lid. You just taped some parchment paper over, over yeah. the light. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. You don't want to don't want to have the harsh light bulb or, or the LEDs to soften your nose up, diffusing them a little bit with something, whether it's plastic or parchment paper or a cloth or a sheet. Um, okay. You can do that. So we had um, we had a few other people join us, and we have a question. And um, I'm not sure who this is, so let us know your name. But I'm going to pop it up on screen here, and it says, "What do you think about virtual backgrounds? These have been all the rage, right? People sure. are being super creative with virtual backgrounds, having some fun with them. I know there's been a ton of you know just funny things." You know, and I've been seeing some video ones as well. So what do you, what do each of you guys think about virtual backgrounds? So Adam mentioned that context matters, right? So my team is using them to incredible humor during virtual happy hour. And the more subtle that they are about it, the better. So um, everybody tries to one up each other with their virtual backgrounds. I will say I've been in multiple client facing conversations where you know they're glitchy mm -hmm. so if when i was talking with somebody and their chair kept disappearing and then you, all you can think about is where are they really what what did they want to hide and so it doesn't feel as authentic yeah yeah i get that i get that yeah. and it's kind of distracting because you're focusing on the glitch and not on the person how about you adam i know you mentioned it a little bit earlier about the sure. virtual background yeah. you want to yeah um, similar to Kathy, I like them for the uh, for the happy hours. Um, in fact, I like them a lot because I posted two dozen photos for people to download and use as virtual backgrounds. But uh, yeah. um, and uh, they do get glitchy if you 
But one, one way that you can help that is to make sure that you have a clean background behind you. Mm-hmm. A plain wall will help if you've got things like I've got behind that stru- makes the camera struggle to figure out where you are versus the background. So having a plain wall behind you and being lit properly will, will help the glitchiness on the, the virtual okay. background. Again, I would avoid using them for business meetings or uh, interviews. Okay. Good advice. Good tip. Okay. Um, all right. So, um, Kathy already talked about this a little bit about the best practice for camera placement. But Adam, do you have anything to add about um, camera placement to you know proper placement to look your best? Um, same. Have it at eye level, and um, as opposed to looking down, we don't like mm-hmm. to have double chins and triple chins and so forth. <laughs> Shadows or looking up your nose. You know, we don't need to see up your nose. Um, you know, all the Instagram. People, they hold their cameras up here because so, it's a much better, um, you know, better view, um, right. more flat, more flattering uh, image. Yeah. Um, if, if you've got, you know, there's cameras built into the computer or monitor in some cases, but there are also these um, portable anyway, oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, USB plug-in cameras. So again, you can use that and make sure you mount it at the right height um, right. If, if that's what you've got and you're using. Um, be creative if you need to, you know, tape it, tape it to the top of the screen or, um, you know, like Kathy said, lift your computer or monitor up to be the mm-hmm. appropriate level. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, context of your presentation as well. If you're in an interview and you plan to stand for it, you have to lift your whole setup higher. So maybe yeah. you need a counter or you need a egg crate uh, or milk crate to set it up on. Um, you know, do what you have to do to get everything to the proper level. Right, right. And I think adding to the shortlist presentations, you know, it's not just you. And, you know, we have a lot of marketers, marketing managers and, and stuff mm-hmm. on watching this. You know, that's part of practicing, right? And telling right. people, telling your presenters, getting your presenters all on screen <laughs> so you can see their backgrounds, you can see their meeting. And you can tell them, hey, you need to put something underneath your laptop and lift it up. Or I'm looking at just your chest. I can't see your face. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I think that not only for ourselves, but helping our teams look best on camera, too, is really important for not just practicing your messaging anymore for presentations. It's now like all of this other stuff, like testing it out, telling people Mm -hmm. you need to clean off the shelf behind you before the presentation, mm-hmm. you need to like up your lighting, you know, or, right. or you know, and that kind of stuff. So that's, mm-hmm. a, that's a good point. And I think as marketers, we notice that more. Don't assume your team is just going to take care of it because they probably don't even see it. Yeah. So the standing desk thing, I had a team members give a presentation recently. The people who were standing were way more engaging. Yeah. Because because you're standing, like you feel that energy. Right. So when you were presenting, it came through so much more connected. Um, mm. So and that was a surprising sort of discovery. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if you so maybe encouraging your team members to try to stand, but then they have to adjust. You know, they have to either get a counter height and then maybe put some your your laptop up on something or your webcam, and then mm-hmm. adjust all your lighting and then. And, and I guess also, too, this goes back to camera placement is how close or how far away mm-hmm. from the camera they're going to be and, mm-hmm. and how that affects their lighting and their sound mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> as well. You know, related to that, we talked before we were live today that, you know, Kathy moved herself around a little bit so that her head was similar size to the rest of us. And that's something to keep in mind when you're preparing your team for an interview as well. Yeah. Great, great. So now let's, so anything else you guys want to add on lighting or camera placement that you that we miss maybe? I think one thing is if you're going to adjust your laptop, you may need to get a keyboard that's, that's off board because, you know, you can't type like this all day. That's not going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah, so we just, did have, oh, go ahead, Adam. I was, I was just going to say, and get creative if you don't have, 
a laptop stand or you know something you can use boxes or books or yoga blocks to <laughs> to make it do whatever you need to do to get to that setup you've got stuff in your house that you can yes. use to, yeah. to get there so it yeah. doesn't have to be anything formal or fancy nobody's going to see that part of it they're, they're seeing you so all the other stuff can look like garbage behind you as long as it works <laughs> yep absolutely absolutely now we did have a question come in from emily I'm going to pop this up. And she asked, we have branded virtual background to reinforce our brand. Um, is that appropriate for business meetings? So this is kind of just still a follow up on the virtual backgrounds. What are your opinions on using the branded virtual backgrounds for client meetings or business meetings? So I'll tell a little bit of a story. We hosted an SMPS Dallas event and the amazing moderator had created this great virtual background, like fantastic, but it was mostly white and he was wearing a white shirt. Oh no. So the camera couldn't tell where the background started and where he ended. So he just looked like a head. <laughs> yeah. So um, I think part of the problem with virtual backgrounds is you're handing them to people who don't understand like marketers do that you've got to have contrast. Mm. Um, and so it can fail. So I think just, again, going back to the testing ahead of time, um, you know, there's nothing inherently bad in them. Mm -hmm. Though I will say there's a level of authenticity. I'm like, Adam, I get a sense of who you are seeing you in place. Lindsay, the mm -hmm. same. Mm -hmm. And it's been fun to see mm -hmm. inside of people's worlds. There's, mm -hmm. there's something very connecting about that. And if we overproduce, then that gets lost. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's one thing to tweak stuff so that your connection's better, so that nothing is interrupting the connection, like right. no loud noises running, or you have a microphone that's close to your mouth so that the sound's a little warmer than just what you would get. Mm -hmm. But it's another thing to feel too produced. Yeah, yeah. And you know, oh, another point with the with the branded backgrounds. Um, you're, you still run the risk of the glitchiness with that, mm -hmm. and you don't know what other people's connections are on your team. Their, their internet connections you know, mm -hmm. may not, or their computer, maybe even more computer um, setup, you know, may not be strong enough to to do that. Plus, then they have to have the, the right lighting and the right background behind them to make it all work well, right. as well as dress properly to to not be a floating head. So there's <laughs> there's so many variables in that. Yeah. Um, to use as long as you're aware of it and can plan for all of that, you know, that they're probably fine, but yeah. uh, it's just a lot, a lot to plan. Yeah. And going back to Kathy's minute being overproduced, it's almost like, you know, let's say you have six presenters. Um, so you have six heads plus the clients and then all six of your heads and the backgrounds are the same. It just kind of maybe start to look sterile almost like, mm -hmm. or robotic. Um, mm -hmm. And to prescribe. If you went to an interview person, you know, sometimes I guess teams wear the same thing, but every person doesn't look the same and doesn't present the same and doesn't have the same charisma. So I think it, like, you know, it, it's not necessarily, it's more human. It's more of that human connection too without, you know, so I, I was kind of on the fence, you know, either way, you know, with virtual backgrounds. So with me, the jury's still out, but I think testing it, you know, using them and testing them and see how it looks mm -hmm. with all of your presenters on the big Zoom screen and seeing what that looks like too. Might just, it just might be a little too, yeah, to the client. Yeah. And Lindsay, that's a good point about multiple screens like that. So maybe maybe just one person has the, back, the virtual background. Maybe whoever mm -hmm. the lead presenter is or, you know, somebody uses that and everybody else has a standard background. Right. right. Yeah. I mean, it's a great way to get your to get, to make sure that your company name is there. Yeah. Um, there, you know, and there's software that can do that for you. Um, our team's been playing a lot with, I believe it's OBS. And uh, I just asked Lindsay if this particular platform that she's using, because it's such a great experience, yeah. even if you're not technical to come on. And so, um, but it's, yeah, it's not quite made for that. So there's, right. some, there's some things that don't work. Yeah. 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 So, Keep your questions coming, um, you know, for Adam and Kathy here. So these have been some great questions and comments. And um, we had 
Um, another user say that they use similar backgrounds to reinforce their brands, internal and external. So, um, okay, so we talked about lighting, camera placement, background. Let's talk audio. So, Kathy, how can you ensure that your sound is coming through loud and clear for the viewers? So, sound gets overlooked, but it's really important in understanding, communicating, and, and connection. Mm -hmm. um, so, if you don't have anything, if you're just using your your laptop, get if you've got any kind of even just the earbuds that have a microphone that can almost always just improve your sound immediately. And I'm talking about the low end, you know, audio jack, just whatever to listen. And it happens to have a microphone because it gets it close to your mouth. If you want to go a little bit better, this little Logitech headset mm -hmm. I'm using that puts it here is about $35. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to take it even further, um, you're usually in about the hundred to hundred and fifty dollar range to get a really good mic for podcasting, mm -hmm. but unless you are well, for one thing, if you're doing an, an interview, it is worth it to spend the money for the ma the lead person on the firm to have that level of quality of their sound. Right. Um, but you know, just for day to day meetings, it's it's not worth you know it's mm -hmm. it's not worth investing in. Yeah. <laughs> You, like your your iPhone ear pot earbuds that come with your iPhone. Yes, could work. Fantastic. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. One one suggestion with those, you know, when you have the the wired kind, the microphone hangs down hangs down low here, and you have to be careful that it's not rubbing against your clothing because then oh. it'll make some you know scratching noises and it makes it harder to hear. So just be cautious of that when you have the wired. Um, headphones. I have wireless ones in, so I don't have that issue. Yeah. And I would say with the wire too, not just your clothes, but as you can see, I have long hair. It gets um, in my hair. So the rustling of the hair and depending on what kind of blouse you have on. So you can um, so just be careful of the, the microphone placement. So that's why I have this next one that is above me. So it's not going to my, to my hair. I want to so, mention too, we were at an interview where somebody was interviewing to pitching to us and they played a video on zoom and they couldn't get the audio to work and they spent i don't know how much time like it was it was a train wreck it was awful and you know we were embarrassed in front of our clients mm -hmm. they were also pitching to their one practice Mm -hmm. And practice with somebody on the other end and not just internally, right? Mm -hmm. They can see, but also, you know, on Zoom, you have to specifically say that if you're playing a video, you want to use that audio. Mm -hmm. So there are settings and yeah. you know, it varies by platform. Right. Yeah. right. yeah. We've, we've had some, we've tried doing that with GoToWebinar, which is another webinar service. And we had to practice it a couple of times and even when we were live <laughs> we still had some audio issues and what i rec if you are playing a video in a client meeting or again this test but they also what we realized the go to meeting and i don't or go to webinar which i don't know if it's the same with Zoom, is that the viewer in order to hear the audio had to be on the computer audio they couldn't have been just dialed in through their phone wow so that's a, you know, so if you do have videos <laughs> or other audio that isn't just you speaking, then you really need to really investigate how that works with a certain, you know, if it's GoToMeet or GoToWebinar or Zoom or Teams or Skype or whatever platform you're using, um, you know, WebEx, how that's going to play through. Maybe even get on the phone with somebody from one of those companies to walk you through it because if you're an account holder with them, they'll, there should be support. So, um, because we learned that on the first time we were doing some live demo webinars, um, for full sale partners and, and we had people saying, can you hear audio? Well, now we have to tell them in order to hear the audio that you have to be using the computer audio through go to webinar instead of the call in. And, wow. and which is like counterintuitive, but, you know, because sometimes, especially for the shortlist presentation, we do recommend people dial in to not use so much of your Wi-Fi, uh, like in the client side, of doing that as well um, from those clients. So thank you for reminding me of that, <laughs> that incident that we had. <laughs> so, all right. Well, let's go. 
Oh, okay. Somebody posted a comment. I don't know who this is, but they said, um, you spend $100 on a clicker, spend the same on a mic. So beyond those presentation clickers, you know, yeah. um, and for the grand scheme of our projects, I mean, spending 100 bucks on a mic or 600 bucks for giving mics to 600 people, I mean, yeah. for a million dollar project or millions of dollars of projects, I mean, it, that's like mm -hmm. nothing. So yeah. it's probably what you would have spent if you had to travel to the presentation. So set up your teams properly, some lighting and some and mic because it's worth mm -hmm. it. Like what Kathy said, at least lead presenter um, or the, the, the main people speaking so they can create that connection with your clients. One of the things that Adam mentioned earlier or when we were speaking yesterday, or maybe Lindsay, maybe it was you, is talking about making sure that if you have other people in the house, that they're not streaming and using up your bandwidth mm -hmm. when you're mm -hmm. presenting. Like that's also another thing we have to watch out for, just, just mm -hmm. work from home. Uh, yeah. In the office, you never even think about it. Yeah. But at home, it can be a real issue. Yeah. 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 And, and other noises, just uh, dishwashers and washing machines or yeah. dogs and you know, dogs barking, doorbells, all of those things can be, a, you know, something to keep in mind and make sure right. you're set up in a, in a good location, you know, depending on your, on what kind of meeting you're having. Right, right. And that's where a headset, like, or earbuds or a headset comes in too, because that buffers a lot of the sound, the outside mm -hmm. sounds, as well as, as opposed to just using your computer speakers or computer mic that is going to pick up everything in the peripheral. Mm -hmm. So I have found that when I, I do have a headset that I, I use for client meetings and um, my dog could be barking right outside my door and they can't even hear it because I have the headset on and it's just, it, the, mm -hmm. the microphone's contained. So yeah. it's very helpful. Mm -hmm. All right. Any other questions from the audience? Here we go. Let me look back through the comments. We had some more people. Um, we had somebody from Florida. I can't see your name. Um, okay. We had a comment here. Um, let me just pop this up on the screen. I'm not sure who this is from, but I want to give you credit. He's one of the web connection testers in the internet right before as well. I found that my computer was in a dead spot and moving five inches fixed the problem. So again, that goes back to... That is uh, so smart. Yes. Testing, yeah. testing. Yes. Yeah. And have your folks do it too. I mean, I know it's mm -hmm. like pulling teeth before all of this to get presenters to rehearse. And now you have a bigger excuse and say, no, we need to test everything um, and then get them to rehearse a little bit in the testings. <laughs> so. And to that point about connection, um, I, I brought home a uh, uh, cord so I can plug in directly to the router instead of using the Wi-Fi just so I had a stronger connection uh, as well. Yeah. So that, that's a, I would recommend that if you have anything that's really important that needs to be um, connected well. Yeah, great, great tip. Okay, that was Sarah. Hi, Sarah. Thank you for that comment and that um, trick. Um, so that was really good. Sarah is in. I think you're in Dallas, right, Sarah Kennard? You're in. You're in. You're in Texas. I don't. I'm. I'm, I'm thinking Dallas, but I Sarah Kynard is a badass. I just want to say. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So all right. So that's kind of all of our. Um, we're going to start wrapping it up now. So I'm going to turn it back over to Adam and Kathy just to have mm -hmm. one more last tip or word of advice um, mm -hmm. to leave all of our viewers today. So Adam, I'll turn it over to you first. Um, sure. Yeah, one more thing I just thought of is with in my situation here, my dining room, I'm set up in the dining room and I'm using a big Mac monitor. So the, the uh, camera is pretty high up and my dining room chairs are fairly low and I'm not very tall. So, um, so I brought a, a have a, a adjustable stool, adjustable height stool that mm -hmm. I brought in and it has set up so that I can sit higher and more comfortably um, to be on camera better. Okay. So it was an adjustment I made, you know, I was using pillows for a while on the chair as a, as a booster, but uh, you know, I, I found this uh, bar stool that I have and uh, yeah. brought that up to, to use in, in place. So, so just looking around, making, you've got stuff in your house or, mm -hmm. or you know, if, if you can make a trip to the office to grab something and bring home, you've, you've got stuff. It's, you don't have to buy a lot in order to make all of this stuff work. Exactly. Great tip. Great tip. How about Kathy, you, any 
closing advice or last last thoughts? Sure. So here's what I love about all of this. There are people who have spent their careers becoming amazing at connecting with people in person one-on-one. And for the first time, like the playing field is level. This is your chance to get really, really good at this so that you can pull ahead and be somebody who can deeply connect via video. And it can give you, especially, you know, we were talking earlier about interviews. It can really give you an edge and it takes just a little bit of thought and a little bit of arranging things and a little bit of practice. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, I don't know how I can end it after that. I mean, (laughs) how can I follow that? So I'm going to um, start wrapping it up. So again, if you guys have any questions or last thoughts for the viewers, just leave them in the comments and I'll make sure to give you a shout out. Um, so I am going to link up a bunch of resources in the comments after today's show. So Kat put together a big PDF um, tips sheet for us. So I'm going to look that up. And then Adam has written a blog post that takes some of the concepts he talked about and just wrote them up too. So I'm going to link up both of those in the comments below after we get off live today. And I also want to remind all of our viewers that Monday starts my um, five-day productivity challenge, work from home edition. So if you're struggling to or get all of your stuff done, or you feel like you're just working all the time and don't really have a lot to show for it, and you're trying to balance everything, come and join me in this five-day challenge. Each day, you're going to get a mini video lesson and, and a challenge to put that insight into action. And because you're a part of the Marketers Take Flight co-working community, you can save $10 by using the promo code community. And so you'll just go over to marketerstakeflight.com slash challenge, or you can just scroll up in this group and you can see it on the heading um, for the group profile. So that starts Monday. The promo code's only good till Friday, which is tomorrow. (laughs) Today's Friday Eve. So I hope you guys can join me in that challenge. And I just want to spend a few minutes thanking Adam and Kathy. Not only did they agree to be part of this, but they brought so much insight and so many practical tips. I love giving tips that people can implement right away. And not only did they are just like, oh, we'll just do some Q&A. They came with some great ideas about doing the demonstration and some some show, um, show and tell. Um, so they are just amazing people. And I, I'm sure you can find them. They're in this group, so you'll be able to find them. And they're on LinkedIn. So reach out, connect with them. They always have just a wealth of knowledge and inspiration. So I wanted to thank you guys again for taking the time out of your day, sharing some great knowledge with us. And with that, if there's not anything else, what doesn't look like there is, we'll say goodbye. Yep. Lindsay, Hi, thank you. Thanks thank for inviting you. us. Yeah.